الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ثم الصلاة والسلام على المصطفى المجتبى وعلى آله النجباء وعلى أصحابه الكرماء ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله بفو entering into our topic which is a sound heart this is my first visit here but alhamdulillah I have known quite a bit about the good work being done here by through uh, through the, uh, the informations that uh, uh, Sheikh Mendez has spoken to me about alhamdulillah so it gave me a very good impression as i stepped in here alhamdulillah the as they said the 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 reality al-hal tabaq al-maqal what was said is exactly reflected by the very state alhamdulillah of, of the place and uh, alhamdulillah your humble contribution to here has been pointed out by our brother here and, um, and that's what uh, they said that uh, to recognize uh, people's deeds is an act of shukr if you do not uh, uh, give uh, thanks to people you don't give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well so barakallahu fikum uh, the work you've been doing for the Muslims in the West and now Alhamdulillah you are now in the Western part of this Islamic world which is West Africa <laughs> May inshallah continue the same work so hopefully inshallah when the time has come is, is ready to come back here you will come back inshallah here again and enrich uh, this place inshallah with the African traditions of Islam Barakallahu feek we pray for you all the time Allah give you long life inshallah and help and help you in your endeavors and of course thanks also goes to uh, uh, the organizations Lamp Post and their wonderful work that they are doing as Khalid said to um, uh, bring focus on, on not Islamic scholarship but Islamic scholarship and the West, which is very, very important. And I do support that, that, that view. It's, it's okay to bring scholars from Africa, from Asia, from everywhere, but it's very important that we raise scholars here from the grounds. It's very important. Because scholars who are born here, raised here, know the spirit of this place more than those who are imported from outside, naturally. So this is an initiative that I, I share uh, this opinion, this view as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help Lampos thrive and prosper in their endeavors and also Masina Institute as well. Inshallah with that <clears throat> I will come to uh, uh, shed some light on uh, the place of the heart in our worship as Muslims. Of all religions, Christianity before, uh, Judaism before, and all the others, no other religion has uh, put so much emphasis and focus on the heart as Islam has done. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surprises in the Quran al Karim. Specifically, pointed out that the Quran itself is a book that is taught to the heart. It was revealed to the heart. In Surah to Ash-Shu'ara, نَزَلَ بِهُ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ أَلَى قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ The Ruhul Amin Jibreel brought this Qur'an to your heart ala qalbik 
So the Quran is centered on the heart. And without the heart, you cannot understand the Quran. No matter how much brain you have, you cannot access the Quran. You can just see it from outside, supervision, with the force of your mind. But you cannot conquer the Quran by your reason. You must come to the Quran with your heart. If you come with your, with your heart, it's going to open up itself to you. If you come with the heart, he said, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day when there is nothing will benefit you, no children, no world, unless you come with a good heart, a sound heart. Only that matters on the day of judgment. Just your heart, not even your deeds. Let's say you come to Allah with good deeds. You come to Allah with a sound heart. That's all that matters. The rest is easy. If your heart is sound. And then in Sayyidina Ibrahim's story, وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِئَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبِ سَلِيمِ Again, among, among his descendants, in Sayyidina Noh, is Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wa salam, when he came to his Lord with a sound. إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبِ سَلِيمِ can he come to Allah without a sound heart? No. Can he enter his presence without your sound heart? No, you cannot. To enter God's presence depends on nothing else. I mean nothing else but your heart. If your heart is sound, they will let you in. If your heart is not sound, they will not let you in. So it's all based on your heart. But this sound heart, there are two aspects of, that the Quran mentioned about the, the qualified heart. When I just mentioned sound heart, qalbun salim, the other one is qalbun munib. Qalbun munib. Salim and Munib. So, Qalbun, Munibun from Inaba. And Salimun from Taslim or Salam. A heart which has turned back to God. It's called Munib. Has turned away from everything towards God. It's called Qalbun Munib. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that the process turning back to Allah al-inaba. No, turning back to Allah is not turning back your body. It's to turn back your heart. It's your heart that matters. So turning back your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are three process, three steps. In the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu said, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْإِيمَانُ فِي الْقَلْبِ شرح, When Iman enters your heart, that your, your, your chest, your bosom, that there's, it, it expands in shah. إِذَا دَخَلَ الْإِيمَانُ فِي الْقَلْبِ شرح فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ صَلَاةُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُ هَلْ لِذَلِكَ مِنْ عَلَامًا They ask him, is there any sign for that? The expansion of your heart. قال نعم. We said yes. The first one, التجافي أن دار الغروب The first sign. 
that your hand, your heart has iman in it, and therefore is expanding. The fourth sign is to turn away at Tajafi. From the home of delusion and deception, which is dunya. But you say that turn your body away from dunya, turn your heart away from it. Your hand can be busy, your hand can be busy with dunya, and your heart busy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At Tajafi and Dal Wurf. Because if Iman enters your heart, the first thing, Iman is a light. Iman, first thing, it shows you, it shows you the fallacy of the love of this world. Your heart will show, will, will show you that. You have no Iman in your heart. You will see dunya as a delusion, a mirage, a passing cloud. A shadow. So the first one, at tajafi and dar al The second one, al inabatu ila dar al khulut. Then to turn away from the home of deception, to turn toward, to turn yourself towards the home of everlastingness, the life of hereafter, the akhirah. To turn away and turn towards. Because you cannot, your heart has only one face. There's no two faces. The moment you want to have two faces, then you become a monafiq. Ma Allahu li rajulin min qalbayni fi jawfi. Allah has not placed two hearts in no man's body. You have only one heart. That means you can only face one direction. If you face dunya, then you face away from Akhara. If you face darkness, you turn your back on light. Only one direction. If you turn, uh, turn towards Akhara, then necessarily you have to turn your back on dunya. Necessarily. So you have only one heart. It's up to you where you want that heart to look at. But you cannot do two things with it. You can watch here and watch there. Allah says, watch Akhirah, I will I'll watch your back for you. Don't worry about that. Yes, you watch me, I'll watch you. For the Quran, remember me, I remember you. Don't remember yourself. That's not your problem. That's not up to you. Remembering yourself and remembering me cannot work either. So you remember me, I remember you. You look at me, I look at you. It's very simple. But you cannot do both of them. If you try to do that, you become confused and tired. It's difficult to do that. So al inabatu ila dar al khulut. Then the third step al istadat lil maut qabla al nuzul. To prepare yourself for death before death comes. Before death comes. Do what you need to do now, today. Please don't wait for tomorrow. Time is not in your control. God set the clock. You can't stop it. Don't say I'll do it later. Because later is not in your control. That letter for you may never come. How many people plan for tomorrow morning and they die before tomorrow morning? How many people were in this morning said, I'll do this this afternoon 
but the afternoon never came for them. Or this evening they never saw the evening. إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَدُ الْمَسَى وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْدَ فَلَا تَنْتَدُ الْسَبَحْ If you live up to the morning, don't wait for the evening. If you live up to the evening, don't wait for the morning. That is غروب. That's self-delusion. Thinking that you have control over time and you don't have control. Nobody has. And he might be will never ever be have control over time. Therefore, prepare for that before that comes. Sim that simply means do what you need to do before that comes. Finish your work. Before you put your head down at night on your pillow, be prepared that you will never raise your head from the pillow. الله يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك الذي قضى عليها الموت رسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون الله takes your souls when you die if not when you sleep والتي لم تمت في منامها so each time you sleep you have given up your soul. Voluntarily. We all want to sleep actually. Yet, you're going to bed, meaning that you're going to die. You're going to give your soul back to its creator. That's what you do when you go to your bed at night. It may never come back, I said. فَيُمْسِكُ الَّذِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتِ The one that is decreed dead often will be held back. مُسِرُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَى رَجَلِ مُسَمَّى The one that has some time still to live, God will send it back into your body. When that happens, you say, I walk up. We didn't wake up. God woke you up. Because He sent your ruh, your nafs back into your body. So that is the God who put you to sleep. Sleep that you cannot resist. You can't refuse sleep. It will overpower you because it's a manifestation of God's power upon us. فلا أعبد الذين تعبدون من دون الله ولكن أعبد الله الذي يتوفاكم. Say, oh people, if you are in doubt about my religion, I don't worship those gods that you worship. I worship the one that put you to sleep. Can anybody deny that? That somebody is putting them to sleep? No. Somebody who has a power over them and force them to sleep and to give up their ruh, their spirit. Then al-istadat lil mawti qabla al-nuzul to prepare yourself for death before death comes. And God said, there are those who when death comes, they said, oh Allah, give me some time. لا يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها أن الله will not give you any delay when your time is up. If you say Allah give me time, I'm going to I'm going to go now. Had an intention to give donation. It's still in my it's still in my in my account. Let me send that. No. Even that you will not be allowed to live any longer. فأصدق وأكم من الصالحين. Allah give me time. I'll give sadaqa and be a righteous person. I said, I will not give you a moratorium. It is a time appointed. No less, no more. You will die. So be prepared. 
So that is what happens to you when Iman enters your heart. That's when we call you a mu'min. But if your Iman is in your mind, you are not a mu'min. It must be in your heart. قالت الأعراب أمنا قل لو تؤمن ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يقول الإيمان في قلوبكم الله سيد البابي صلى الله عليه وسلم the Arabs from the desert they say that we have Iman we have faith Allah said tell them you don't have faith just say that we have joined Islam because Iman has not yet entered your heart you are not counted a mu'min until then. You can be a Muslim. So Iman must enter your heart. And the process for that to happen the first thing is to soften the heart. Because the heart when your heart is hard, Quran talks a lot about the hardness of the heart. Qiswatul Qalb. The hardness of the heart. All these crimes in, in the whole world is because of one thing hard heartedness. If your heart is hard, you can do anything. You can kill, you can steal, you can rob. Anything becomes possible to you. If your heart is hardened, because you have no feeling anymore. ثُمَّ قَصَدْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَيَكَ الْهِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدَّ قَصْوَى Allah said, your heart turned hard after that, like a rock, or even hard. Now when human beings' heart becomes hard, it becomes very dangerous to humanity. Because you can do anything. You don't mind. You have no remorse, no compunction, no feeling, no compassion. No emotions. So that hardness has to be removed from the heart. And the process for the lubricant, the solution that makes the heart soft, is called Vikrullah. This is the <coughs> solution, the liquid that as you put on the heart, is something slowly, slowly. The hardness goes away. As he says in Surah Al Zumar, Allah Nazar Ahsan al Hadith, Kitaban Mutashabihan Mathal. تشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم their heart and their skin become soft to the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى إلانة الجلود والقلوب the softening of the heart by the means of remembrance of Allah. The more you forget Allah, the harder your heart begins to get. The longer that is, the harder it gets. If you forget Him completely, then you're completely, your heart becomes harder than a rock, she said. And even for a fraction of a moment, for those who are really zakirin, even a moment, you feel it in your heart. That's, that hardening begins. 
So dhikr is hajj. That's why Allah did not put any condition, time, or place for dhikr. He said, Fadkurullah dhikran kathiran. Remember Allah a lot without counting, no calculation. Because that's the only thing that cannot stop. The life of your heart depends on it. The moment that you stop, the heart begins to calcify. It begins to hard. And the more you forget, the hardening process continues. Until your heart completely becomes dead. And once your heart dies, and that's when you do anything, no matter how horrendous it is, that's simply because your heart is hard. That's why God said to Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun, when he sent them to Fir'aun, he said, try to soften his heart. Try. He said, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيِّنَا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَقْشَى Speak to him with a gentle word. قَوْلَ لَيِّنَا Tell him something that may soften his heart. And perhaps if his heart becomes soft, he will remember. He forgot. It's, one of, it's like one of us. Because he forgot, that's why he's the way he is. He kills innocent children and so forth and men and so forth. So, soften his heart, if you can. Who knows? Maybe by softening his heart, he may remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or yakhsha or fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same Recommend the same instruction Allah said to the Prophet فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَلَمْ Because of rahmah from Allah you become soft in your heart. لِنْتَلَهُمْ You become soft to your companions. Because if you are not soft to your companions لَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غليظ القلب. If you were high-tempered, heavy-hearted, then all your followers will run away from you. This is what. That's why people break up. It's because of the hardness of the heart. They cannot get along. When people have bad temper. When they have a heavy heart, all because their heart is hard. But Zakirin, remember us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they always get along. Despite their differences. Because their hearts are united. The Sahabas, they were united because their hearts were soft. As Allah mentioned them, Ruhama abaynahum, tarahum rukka an sujada, ashidda ala al kufar, that they were hard on the disbelievers, but merciful among themselves. A believer cannot be harsh to another believer if both of them are truly believers in their hearts. The mark of a believer is gentleness, but that gentleness is not pretended. It doesn't only come from your lips. It comes from their hearts. If your heart is hard and you try to be gentle with your tongue, that does not make any difference. It must come from your heart. If your heart is soft, you speak to people, people sense the gentleness in your voice. The mercy and the compassion is in the tone of your voice. But it comes from the depth of your heart. It's not something that you pretend as a politician, 
just be nice to people with your tongue while your heart you are despising them or you're looking down upon them in your heart but your tongue is giving lip service to them no it's the other way around just make your heart soft and you don't have to pretend your words automatically will come from you gently that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he speaks to his companions, they sense that feeling of gentleness and love in the tone of the voice. But it's because it's from the heart. He's not trying to sweet talk them. A believer doesn't do that. <coughs> must be sincere and genuine from your heart. So, from rahmati min Allah, linta lahum. We are soft and gentle to them because of the rahmah that is in your heart. So, Allah said, illa rahmatan lil alameen. So, this is the first thing that each one of us need to work on. To soften your heart and remove the hardness from it. Because without that, you will not enjoy the presence of Allah ever. You can't enter if your heart is not soft. And the softness of the heart removes two things from your heart. One is fear. You will have no fear in your heart. Two is grief, because these are things that you cannot enter God's presence with fear. Like God said to Sayyidina Musa, La takhaf, have no fear. Inni la yakhafu ladayya al-mursaloon, because messengers don't have fear in my presence. And also they are their followers, true followers. In my presence, why do you fear? Wonderful. Who's going to harm you? Who can reach you in Allah's presence? If you are in Allah's presence, the, the famous Tabi'i, Hassan al-Basri, when he, in, when he fell out with the king of that time, uh, the, it was Hajjaj bin Yusuf. So he sent soldiers to arrest, Hajjaj, to arrest the, the scholar, Hassan al-Basri. So when the news, somebody came quickly, they said that they are coming to arrest me. So Hassan al-Basri went to Habib al-Ajal. Anybody knows him? He's one of the earliest uh, uh, shuyukh of Tasawwuf. He's a saint. So this scholar came to the saint. He said that Hajjah's men are after me. He said to him, okay, go inside and sit down. He went inside his army and he sit down. When the soldiers came, they were looking for him and they came, they, they came to uh, the Habib al-Ajami. They said that this Hassan al-Basri here, he said, come on, go and look. Go for see for yourself. <laughs> they entered his army and they looked everywhere. He said that. They didn't see. <laughs> so when they left, Hassan <laughs> al said to Habib al-Ajami, he said, what did you do? They came here, they almost, they are bumping into me, and they couldn't see me. He said, when I brought you in, he said, I said to Allah, oh Allah, take him into your presence. Because I know that if you are in Allah's presence, who can reach you in Allah's presence? No one. So they can't reach Allah's presence. Allah, who will the Hadrat? So I said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he cannot enter the present if your heart is not in the right condition. So that is the first thing. <clears throat> so the second thing is, there is what you call أعمال القلوب وأعمال الأجسام Actions are of two kinds. The actions of your heart 
that you do with your heart and what you do with your body. The actions of the heart, like vigor, like fikr, are much more impactful and has much more weight than actions of the body, naturally. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Tafakkur sa'a khayrun min ibadah di sana. But in another riwayat, min ibadah di sittina sana. That to have spent a moment in reflection. Fikr. Is much more better than to spend one whole year in worship. And that is true. Because a moment of fickle reflection can take you billions of years. In a moment of fickle, you can enter Allah's presence. But you can do years and years of worship. You can't reach that presence. So to train yourself to focus on your inner powers, to develop your fickle, your reflection, to develop your faculties instead of focusing on the number of actions that you do with your body. So usually the, 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 the qualified teachers, when you, go, when you come to them at the beginning, they will try to reset you completely, to bring your focus back to your heart. Because usually people are focused on the number of deeds that they do, your actions of the body, instead of the action of the heart. You work with your heart. So, ibadah to tafakkur sa to spend one moment reflecting about Allah's creation, about the creation of the universe, about the night and the day, about the creation of the male and the female. So this tafakkur sa, just to reflect about this, is much more better for you than to pray thousands of rak of nawafil. Because of the action of the heart brings you closer to God than the action of your body. And yet, it's much more, it's much, it's much more easier for you. You spend less effort, yet you will reap more reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all his time was trying to bring the sahabas back to the action of the heart. You have the story of few sahabas, companions. <clears throat> One of them was Sayyidina Ali. One of them was uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud and many others one day they came to the Prophet's house alayhi salatu wasalam they asked his wife how does he worship at home they said to them that sometimes he prays at night he also sleeps at night you know when he can afford to he eats meat mean that he eats delicate food, he fasts sometimes, doesn't fast sometimes. Anyway, they tell them how he worship because they are not they are expecting something that is so much. Uh, they are expecting to hear that he doesn't sleep at night, he doesn't he never break his fast and so forth and so forth. But they hear something that looks very normal. So they, so they said to themselves, they said, okay, the way you worship God is very simple, it's very easy, but because he's a prophet, that's why. As for us, we need to do more. So one of them said, for me, I will never eat meat moving forward. One of them said, for me, I'll always fast. That's not my life. One of them said, me, I'll never sleep at night. So, so, 
So Baba Sallallahu had what the what the, the story he called them. Shared to them that I heard that you said this and this and this. They said yes. He said because we feel that you are because you are a prophet, you don't have to do so much. But for us, we are ordinary men. We need to work hard. He said, no. he said keep a balanced life. Wake up at night, sleep at night. Fast sometimes, break your fast sometimes. And this is my sunda. This is my way. And he said that wa ana a'lamukum billah wa akhshaakum lahu. And I know Allah more than you. But look at the point. Ilm. I know Allah more than you. And therefore I fear Allah more than you. He didn't say, I'm a prophet, you are not. No. He said, knowledge. I know Allah more than you. Because that's the criteria. It's not about doing so much worship. It's about knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's, the, mark. that's the point. And knowing Allah depends on your heart. If your heart is alive, is sound, then Allah will give you knowledge. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهَ Have taqwa and Allah will give you knowledge. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Have taqwa and Allah will give you rahmah. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Have taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you shukr. Ridwa. All this because of taqwa. Have taqwa, Allah will give you knowledge. Have taqwa, Allah will give you rahmah. Have taqwa, Allah will give you shukr. And then taqwa is where? Taqwa is in the heart. ذَلِكَ وَيُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ It is the taqwa of the hearts that brings you knowledge, that brings you rahmah, and brings you ridwan, because shukur is ridwan. إِنْ تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ You have all of this because your heart is right. The heart is the path, the right path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Innahu sayrul qulub la sayrul abdan. This journey is a journey of the hearts. When we will think about the, the scholars are talking about the path to Allah, the journey to Allah, they, they, they imagine that this is a, a real path that you walk on. No, it's the journey of your heart. Your heart is the one that travels to Allah. It's not your body. But if your heart is not even going anywhere, al qalb your heart is in shackles, your heart is in chains, where are you going to go? You have to liberate your heart first. You have to break all those chains. And Quran specifically says that Rasulullah came to break those chains from us in Surah Al Araf. ويحرم عليهم الخبائث ويضع عنهم إسرهم والأغلال التي كانت عليهم. He is a liberator, a giver of freedom to humankind. So the unleavened prophet, the Nabi al Ummi, that they found written in Torah and the Gospel. 
Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem is mentioned in Dua. He's mentioned in the Gospel, in the Bible. Even though most of him has been removed over the time. What does he do? Ya'muruhum bil ma'ruf. He commands them to righteousness. Wa yinhaahum adil munkar. And he forbids them from wickedness. Wa hillu lahum utayyibat. And make good things halal for them. Lawful for them. Wa yuharim alayhim al khaba'ith. And forbid them from consuming what is unlawful. And finally, wa yadha'a anhum israhum. He take off their load. Because he might be carrying this big load that they cannot throw off. He came to remove our load off our back. Free us from the load we are carrying. Our sins and our responsibilities that has broken our backs. وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُمْ عَدَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Allah don't put a load upon us as he did put on those before us. So he came to remove our load. Israel. وَالْأَغْلَالَ And the chains. غُلْ That is tying our hands, our feet, our hearts. He came to break them. كَانَ دَعَلِي Which were chaining them down. But beginning, this liberation begins with the heart. The heart must be liberated first. Break all the chains on the heart. And then all the others will break off by itself. So this is the mission that Rasulullah came to accomplish, to liberate humankind from their chains, their shackles and manacles. The chain of ignorance, the chain of grief and fear, and bring instead freedom, safety, security, and happiness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, inshallah, to be truly on his footsteps. Quran kuntum tuhibbun Allah wa tabi'uni. We're talking about there's a difference between a follower and a believer. Somebody believes you and somebody follows you. It's not the same thing. At least that's what the ayah seems to indicate. In Surah Al-A'raf, just before these eyes I mentioned. فَالَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعْهُ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْرِحُ First, فَالَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا بِهِ Those who believed in Him وَعَزَّرُوهُ and those who supported him. وَنَصَرُوا Those who helped him. وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَا And they followed the light that came down with him. Follow that light. Those who follow the light is called the follower. Those who follow that light. وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَا That light is still here. Not going anywhere. <coughs> the moon that came down with him is still here. So those who follow that light are called the followers. Till the day of Qiyam. The believers are plenty. The followers are fewer. That's so what I said. Say if you if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want Allah to love you, then follow me. Allah will love you. Because you love Allah, that is up to you. That doesn't mean that Allah has to love you back. It's up to Allah. 
But as a provocation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you feel towards Allah is yours. How Allah reciprocate that is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you want Allah to love you back, then follow me, Allah will love you back. When you hibbu him, when you hibbu him, they love him and he loves them back. So it becomes a mutual love between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a one-sided worship of Allah. Then radiyallahu anhu wa radhu anhu. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So on both sides. That's called an interactive relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So hence, I'll, I'll conclude with this hadith, inshallah. The hadith of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah is about when, when you worship Allah, you must be, you must know that, that you are interacting with Him. It is just that you standing and just throwing words. And you have done salam alaykum you can. Did you interact with Allah? Did you feel that interaction? It's called ibadah. He said, Allah said, Qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi. I have divided prayer between me and my servant. So between me and my servant. Ida qala bis Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. When you say Alhamdulillah, when you say Allah Akbar, you say Al Fatiha, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says Hamidan Yaat. So Allah is responding to you. So when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah said, My servant has praised me. So he, he, he answers your, your, your recitation. Back to your recitation. Hamidan Abdi. When he said, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says, Athna alayya abdi. My servant has exalted me. When you say, Maliki yawm al-deen, Allah says, Majjadani tamjid. My servant has glorified me. Once you say, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in, Allah says, now it's between us now. You've given me my part, now it's your part. He said, ask me what you want. Then he said, اِهْدِنَ السَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ سَرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِ وَلَمْضَرِ Allah said, it's yours, whatever you ask. So that's called an interactive worship. But your worship should not be just one side. A soliloquy, speaking to yourself. You're speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not called ibad. Your heart is not present. That's why. If your heart is with you in your prayer, you will feel God present and feel Him responding to you. And that is true worship. And you will make it as long as you can make it. Because you enjoy that interaction. As Sayyidina Musa did, alayhi salatu wa salam, when God asked him, Mama, tilka biyaminika ya Musa. Musa, what is that in your, in your, in your right hand? Qala hiya asaya. This is my stick. And that's the end of the answer. Because Allah said, what is that in your hand? And Allah said, what is in his hand? But said, now Musa wanted to enjoy Allah's company and Allah's speaking to Allah. So he made the answer very long. Qala hiya asaya. أَتَوَكَّمْ عَلَيْهَا وَأَوْشُ بِهَا عَلَىٰ غَنَمٍ وَلِيَ فِيهَا مَآرِبُ أُخْرَىٰ Allah didn't ask for all of that. But حَلَاوَةُ الْمُنَاجَاتِ The sweetness of munajat. Make it, when you get your chance, make it long. رَبَّنَا تَخَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ اللهم آتِ نفسي تقواها وزكها فإنك أنت خير من زكها اللهم إنا نسألك قلبا سليما ونسألك لسانا صادقا ونسألك من كل خير تعلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر تعلم ونستغفرك لما تعلم ولا نعلم إنك أنت علام الغيوب يا ذا الجلال ويا ذا الجمال ويا ذا المعالي عليك اتكالي
نقول قولي هذا نستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته